guys, this is Erica the Goober, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make stickers using Procreate and a Cricut. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to assume you'll be using a Cricut to cut your stickers, but you can very well use scissors to cut them instead. So here's what you'll need. An iPad, drawing software like Procreate, an Apple Pencil, matte finish sticker paper, scissors, a light grip Cricut mat, a printer, and a Cricut. Step one, create your design. First, you'll wanna set up a new Procreate canvas that's about eight by 10 inches and at least 300 DPI. When designing your sticker, there's a few things you wanna keep in mind. It's very important that you have an interesting but readable design. That means you probably don't want a plain old square or a circle. An interesting silhouette can make for a unique sticker. At the same time, your design silhouette shouldn't be too overly detailed with a ton of small bumps and ridges. This will make it harder for the Cricut to cut as accurately, but we'll talk more about cut outlines later in the video. When coming up with some ideas for designs, think about how would people use your sticker? I usually put my stickers on my sketchbook, but I've seen people put them on the back of laptops or phones. Uh, there's so many possibilities for stickers. Thinking about how your stickers will be used will help you come up with the shape of your design. Really, if you looked at this design, it could be fit into a square, but it's not a square cut. Generally, I make my stickers around three to three and a half inches on the longest side. It's not too big to where people couldn't stick other stickers on the surfaces of their laptop or sketchbook, but it's still a good size sticker and not too small. You also want to think about a color palette when designing your stickers. I found a color palette on Pinterest that I used as a starting point for this design. I generally stuck to this warm tone color palette and added some pink in there as well. Limiting your color palette will help your designs look more cohesive and harmonious. If you add in too many crazy colors, it's not gonna be as readable, especially from far away. This particular sticker was made for my Patreon print and sticker club. The theme for that month was Roaring Twenties. So I started with that simple concept of 20s fashion and created a character from that. So I knew I wanted to do some kind of like feather boa and a really pretty curly updo. Here I chose to use her feather boa as a framing device to mark where the bottom of the sticker would end. It's important to think about how are you going to design your sticker to make it not end so abruptly. If I didn't have this feather boa here, I would probably do some kind of like flowers or vines or some kind of like element that would come in front of her so it wouldn't just be her shoulder and then that's it. I want my design to flow and not be awkwardly cut off at the end. I incorporated a lot of pearls and gold as well because they fit just perfectly with my color palette. The way I painted this sticker design is basically the same way that I paint all of my illustrations. If you'd like to learn more about my painting process, I have a video on YouTube about my painting process in general, or you could check out my Patreon where I have a bunch of in-depth tutorials about uh, different aspects of painting and illustration. You can also see a video of the sticker created in real time and be able to follow along with the process. Once you're finished with your design, you wanna make sure you clean up around the edges with the eraser tool. You also want to make sure that your background is transparent. So in Procreate, on the background layer, if you uncheck the visibility on that one, your background will look like a checkered gray pattern. That means that it is transparent now. This will be very important when it's time to save your sticker design. Step two, create a cut outline. Your cut outline will help your Cricut understand where to cut. So first you're going to want to make a layer underneath your design. Then basically you'll draw an outline around the design. You'll wanna use a sharp, solid brush for this. So not anything fuzzy like an airbrush. I typically use the Thin Render Solid Brush from Jing Sketches Complete Collection. I'll leave a link to that Procreate brush collection in the description. Simplifying the silhouette shape will help 
your Cricut do a cleaner cut. Instead of drawing a bunch of little bumps and ridges for each feather sticking out of the boa, I will draw the general shape of the silhouette. If your Cricut is anything like mine, it is not perfect even after calibrating. Sometimes the cuts are off, especially down towards the bottom right side. For this reason, I have started being a lot more generous with my outline and making it larger than I used to. This ensures that your Cricut won't accidentally cut into your printed part of your sticker. Step three, editing and adjustments. Now we are going to want to get our sticker ready to print. Before making any adjustments, you wanna make sure the actual design part of your sticker is merged together and flattened. Since I want the cut outline to stay white, I will leave that on a separate layer for now. I know that with the sticker paper I use, my designs come out lighter than they normally would on printer paper. I found this out by doing multiple test prints on my particular sticker paper. In my case, I use Curves and Procreate to adjust the contrast and brightness. I'll also go in and adjust the saturation as well. So I want to darken it, add contrast, and increase saturation based on my sticker paper. You'll want to run test prints with your paper as well before you commit to your final printable design. You also want to tightly crop your sticker and make sure there's no excess background. Once all of your adjustments have been made, make sure you flatten your sticker all together in one layer. Make sure your background is transparent and go ahead and save this as a PNG file. Step four, print. Since we'll be cutting our stickers with a Cricut, we're going to want to print using Cricut's design space. So first you're gonna to wanna to open Design Space and make a new project. Then you're going to want to upload your sticker design by going to the left side and clicking Upload. Once your sticker is uploaded, make sure you select Complex for image type. Since we already made our cut outlines, we won't have to do any erasing around the border. Make sure you save your image as a print then cut since we will be printing directly from Design Space. Now that your design is uploaded and ready to go, it will appear on your Cricut Mac canvas. You'll want to scale down your sticker to about three to three and a half inches, like I mentioned before. I suggest printing multiple stickers at a time so you don't waste any sticker paper. Typically for stickers this size, I can fit four on a sheet. You can easily add multiple stickers to the canvas by clicking the duplicate button in the top left-hand corner. These stickers don't have to be arranged at all. You can just simply copy and paste them and whenever it goes to print, it will arrange them in the best possible way to get the optimal number of stickers on a page. Next, click continue at the bottom right hand corner and select send to printer on the next page. Once the dialog box pops up, I usually uncheck add bleed. If I were creating a sticker with a colored cut outline, I would add the bleed, but in this case, since we are creating a sticker with a white cut outline, I'm going to turn the bleed off. Then click print and head over to your printer to see how they turned out. Step five, cut. Make sure your Cricut is turned on, open, and connected to Bluetooth. Since I want the Cricut to cut all the way through my sticker, I often set my materials to at least cardstock or higher. Next, place your printed sticker sheet on a light grip Cricut mat. Make sure it's lined up and securely stuck onto the mat. Load your mat into the Cricut by pressing the load button. To ensure that it's loaded evenly, grip the mat by the bottom middle and apply slight pressure before hitting the load button. Once your mat is loaded, press the Cricut button to start the cut. The Cricut uses the black box around your images to scan where it's supposed to cut. To create my stickers, I use Inkjet Creative Media's vinyl self-adhesive matte sticker paper. In my experience, I found that only matte sticker paper has worked for me. I've tried using glossy sticker paper of the same brand, and since the paper was super reflective, whenever the Cricut went to scan the black box, it would just reflect the light back onto the sensor. This resulted in me not being able to cut the stickers with the Cricut at all, just because it couldn't read it. 
I haven't tried any other brands of glossy sticker paper, so if you have any suggestions, please drop them in the comments below. Now that your stickers are finished cutting, press the load button again to unload your mat. Typically when removing your stickers, you're going to want to gently bend the mat to help lift the stickers from the adhesive. In my case, my Cricut has been giving me some issues where it's not cutting all the way through my stickers, even with a new blade. I've tried increasing the pressure by changing the material and even bonded fabric doesn't seem to work. It seems to cut the sticker, but not all the way through the paper. So I usually have to kind of wiggle the sticker off of the paper and use scissors to clean them up. It hasn't always been this way. My Cricut used to work perfectly fine, but this is more of like a recent problem. After recording this, I bought a new Cricut mat to see if maybe it had gotten warped and the paper might have been moving because this one's super old, like two years old. So maybe that will fix the issue. But like I said, this is a brand new blade and it is still not cutting. So if anyone has any advice or suggestions, I would super, super appreciate it if you left them in the comments below. And that is basically how I make all my stickers for my Patreon print and sticker club. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. If you have any additional questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you to all of my Patreon supporters for supporting the channel as well as my illustration work. I do have a few shout outs to do for new and upgrading top supporters. These include Daring Disney Do, Midnight Wolf, Carrie Golightly, Colleen Rose Art, Mesostopheles, Doodle Cakes, Sammy's Gallery, and C. Lewis Shong. Thank you all for your support and making videos like this possible. All of these patrons will also receive an in-depth video guide on how to make stickers. It includes a written step-by-step -step process as well as some additional tips. If you like what I make, please consider supporting me on Patreon. A few of my Patreon benefits include Instagram story shoutouts, sketch requests, speed paintings, step-by-step -step tutorials, and much more. Check out the link in the description for a complete list of all the rewards. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye!